Hello and welcome to the section of the Chemistry Tutor. Uh, here we're going to build upon what we were working on in the last section with uh, solutions and uh, molar concentration and we're going to learn how to calculate when we dilute a solution, what happens when we dilute a solution. We talked briefly in, in sort of a general sense what that means. If you think of your sugar water, right, you put a certain amount of sugar or salt or something into a glass of water, okay, if you dilute it, what well, we're basically kind of take that to mean is you, you, you add more solvent, you water it down so to speak. So if I do that and if I add another liter of water on top of it, then I don't add any more solute to it, any more sugar, then of course the concentration is going to be lower. So I dilute that guy, right? And that's basically what happens. So in all of these problems, you're going to be usually given almost like a before and an after. You're going to have a certain solution here, you're going to add some solvent to it, you're going to change the concentration, you're going to have to calculate what that is. And that's what all of these problems are dealing with. The number one rule for you to remember, different books teach this different ways, but I'll tell you the bulletproof way to know what you're doing in this section, is to realize that anytime you dilute anything, the number of moles or the amount of the solute that you have in there is never, never, never going to change, right? If I take this glass of water and I put one teaspoon or something of sugar in it, I dump it in there, that goes in there, it dissolves, it disappears, so to speak. But the, the amount of moles of sugar is present now in the solution form for your water, right? Now, if I then take and I add another liter or another two liters or another 15 liters of water and I put it in there and I mix it up, I've changed the concentration, obviously, it's not as strong anymore, but the number of moles of sugar in there is the same. I haven't added any sugar, I have not subtracted any sugar at all. All I've done is add more liquid to make it kind of like, you know, spread more thinly if you want to use that analogy. But the number of moles of sugar in this analogy is the same. So that's what you need to think about always in these problems. Anytime you dilute anything, that's the key. You basically need to find the number of moles of solute you have and then apply it to the second half once you dilute the solution. That's going to get you to 99.9% .9 of all of these problems, just to know that fact. You know, a lot of students think, well, once you dissolve it, it's magically gone, and who knows where it is. Well, it's still, you know, 0.5 moles of salt or whatever it was to begin with that you put in there. It's still there. It's just maybe spread out among a larger volume if you dilute it. All right, so knowing that, let's take our first problem. It says, if 25 milliliters of 1.04 molar solution of Na2CO3 is diluted to 0.5 liters, what is the molarity in the uh, diluted solution? So again, it kind of follows the pattern I told you about. You have initially, you have an initial solution and a final solution, basically, because you've diluted it. The final solution is what happens after you've diluted it. You're trying to find out what that molarity is. But initially, we know we have 25 milliliters of 1.04 molar solution. So we have the volume and we have the molarity initially. And then we dilute it, we have a new volume, and we're trying to find the new concentration. But the number of moles of solute on both ends of that guy is never going to change because we never added or subtracted any solute. So if we can just find the number of moles of solute we began with, we can apply that to the final solution because that doesn't change and then we can find that concentration. So let's start by finding out the number of moles of solute, in this case it's Na2CO3, how many moles of that stuff exists in the first solution. So to find that, um, we start with 25 milliliters of solution. And what I mean by solution, this is the initial solution, this is the first part of the problem. We're just trying to find out how many moles of solute exist in there. 